Hello my Fireflies and welcome back to the Cyan Firefly, it's me Lyette and today I am going to be showing you guys the Bureau XCOM Declassified. I know some of you probably looked at the title and got really excited. Is this a return to the XCOM Let's Play? No, no this is not. I am done with the XCOM Let's Play due to file corruption and all sorts of other nasty stuff. That series is done. No, we are now taking on the Bureau, which is a completely different game. It's almost completely unrelated to XCOM. It's set in the 60s. It's a completely different cast of characters, and it's a third-person shooter. Yeah, that's kind of strange, isn't it? Now, for those who don't know, this game actually has a slight history. Originally, a game called XCOM Declassified was announced. It was... There weren't too many details about it, except for the fact that it was supposed to be a first-person shooter set in the 60s. There were no XCOM enemies in it whatsoever. There seemed to be this pixelated enemy that could reconstruct itself, and there was black sludge everywhere, and it was extremely weird. Then XCOM Enemy Unknown was announced, and this game completely dropped off the grid. Nobody knew whatever the hell happened to it. All the websites, all the YouTube stuff were completely pulled. The game vanished. And then a, about a month later, this pops up. It's been renamed to The Bureau. It's still an XCOM game, but now it's a third-person shooter and a ton of other details have changed. So that aside, exactly what has The Bureau become? Well... Let me show ya. We're just gonna pop in here. When you're done. Sure. Okay, so this is XCOM, and yes, it is a third person shooter. You control this uh investigate well, I don't really know what he did. I think he was part of the Marines or something, and he's an extremely talented agent. The world is of course being attacked by aliens. And you must lead the XCOM tax, uh, task force to trying to save the world. Well, specifically, this time around, your focus is in America. I have not had any missions that take me to other parts of the globe, so the scope has narrowed somewhat. Then again, this is the 60s. We do not exactly have everything in place that we would in modern day. We don't really have a global satellite network. We don't have all the cool nifty shit we have nowadays which would make you think that this is more of a struggle wouldn't it yeah not exactly but we'll get into that when we actually start doing some of the missions now there is a lot more conversation potential in this game you can actually go to individual characters and you can speak to them see if I have a character to talk to Cholsky. sir heard anything interesting I hear all sorts of interesting things sir how many of them are true? That's a different question. You looking for something specific? So yes, here's a Mass Effect style dialogue wheel that I can enter, and I can discuss people, uh, discuss random things with people. Doesn't seem to be any morality stuff in this, it's just kind of a, a dialogue tree really. But the thing is, every once in a while you'll pick one of these choices and you'll end up saying something in a way that it's worded so vaguely that you can wind up being an asshole without in intending to. Like, this one's pretty clear-cut. This is the asshole response, this is the normal response. But every once in a while I've said something where it's like, Yeah, my character's being kind of a dick and I didn't want him to. Uh, I guess that's just kind of the nature of these crappy chat wheels, I suppose. Alright, I have a signal for you to look Agent at. Weaver found a signal in Oregon. I need you to look at this. She mentioned something about that. Oregon, right? Yeah, she thinks there might be a facility there. Well, let's see. Let me know what you find. I should be able to pin it down soon. Agent Weaver already did the hard part. I'll come back later. Now, as you can see, the dialogue isn't particularly all that inspiring, and it's synced up to the mouths really, really badly. That last sentence uh, main character said right there, uh, William Carter, that's his name, I completely spaced on it, mostly 
because he's not that interesting of a character. But yeah, the la last comment he made was... <laughs> it didn't even really look like it came out of its mouth. Is this an anime? Ugh, anyway. So, we're gonna go on and we're gonna go straight into the bread and butter of the game, which is the combat. Because that's what you're gonna be doing a lot of. Most of this stuff really doesn't matter. I do have some missions to do around here, but I want to avoid spoilers. So I'm gonna go on one of the side missions for you guys. Now, before I do that, just like XCOM, you do have a squad, but it is only a squad of two people, including yourself. So you don't have the larger six-man squads you had in XCOM. All right, let's go to mission selection. Now, it's worth pointing out that you do have dispatch missions, which are rather different from your normal missions. Like, this is a normal... This thing scrolls so damn slowly. But here's a normal mission. This is called an operation. This you can go and uh, go with your teammates. You actually land with your crew and you actually do stuff. This over here is a dispatch mission. In this one, you actually select a couple of agents to go off and do their own thing, and then they report back to you successfully. I have not seen a failure state for this. I'm inclined to believe that it cannot fail. So what ends up happening is that they go and do the mission, they gain some experience, and then they get, bring you back some equipment. So you have to dispatch enough agents to actually complete the mission complexity. They have to equal the, the agent strength has to equal mission complexity or higher. And agent strength is equal to their level. So I have a level four character here. That gives me four agent strength, but that's not enough. So I have to send uh, at least two more because I don't have another uh, fourth level guy. Now, from what I've seen, they automatically, I forgot to approve it. Darn it. But from what I've seen, they gain a level every single time they complete one of those. You can also send out uh, multiple missions at a time, assuming you have enough people and they are strong enough to get it done. There we go. So both of these missions will be done by the time I get back. Everybody on them will gain a level and I will get a reward. For this one, I will get the point blank pack, which is a backpack, which I can explain in a few moments. And with this one, I will gain a rank 4 engineer agent. Actually, no, I will not, because I can. I already have the maximum amount of agents, so that's rather irrelevant. You can also check news from the front, which are these interesting little uh, news clips from... I want to keep on wanting to say around the globe, but this is completely located in America, which is not even America, just the United States. So, yeah... They definitely narrowed the scope on this one. I mean, it makes sense plot-wise, but maybe I'm just the only one getting sick of every single frickin' alien invasion taking place in goddamn America. All right, let's move on. So here's our operation. It is in Dudley, Massachusetts. I actually live somewhat close to this. All right, destroy factory. XCOM Intel has uncovered a facility being used to manufacture automated machine troopers. We must destroy this facility before mass production begins. Assemble your team and destroy this factory. Seems like we're going to be running into a new enemy here. Seems pretty interesting. Alright, so I'm going to go into agent management and I'm going to make sure my squad is decked out and I can show you guys what goes on in here. So, motorcycle passing by my house, ignore that. So, First of all, you get an overview, which roughly tells you what your character has unlocked and what they currently have equipped. Then you can go into your equipment and you can select from various weapons and armaments. I have several things unlocked, including human weaponry and alien weaponry. Alien weaponry all seems laser based, which is kind of weird because the aliens in XCOM Enemy Unknown and the previous XCOM games had plasma based weaponry. So I'm really not too sure about this. The only one that seems to use any kind of form of plasma is the blaster launcher. And even then, it's three rockets. So not too keen on that one. You can't get new grenades so far from what I've seen, but that's this is pretty early on in the game. I think I'm about four, maybe five hours in. 
I have a scatter laser, a laser SMG, frag grenade, and I take the tactician pack, which increases my ability range and my weapon damage. There are abilities in this game, and it also reduces incoming damage from enemy fire. I don't think it actually reduces damage from explosives like rockets and grenades, but haven't gotten enough testing to do that. So this is a list of your abilities. As the main character, you could heal. You have a Mass Effect style lift, and then you can summon a Silicoid, which is bit this little goo monster that attacks people. Kind of funny, kind of fun. Then we have your perk tree. As you level up, you will gain additional perks, which you can activate, and they do interesting stuff for you. They're definitely helpful, but you do have some slight choices and slight variation in abilities. Uh, nothing too drastic on your main character, but there are some significant differences on your teammates. You can also customize your character, which basically is restricted to different colors of clothing. I used to have a nice cyan color that I was using, but it doesn't seem like I have that choice anymore because now I'm wearing a sweater for absolutely no reason. But, oh well. Okay. Uh, let's go back. You can also name. You also have a larger degree of customization over your teammates. For instance, I ha actually have Lyat as an engineer. I have not bothered to customize anybody else because these characters do not have personalities, and I am not emotionally invested in them at all. So, as you can see, the perks tree actually branches out quite a bit more when it comes to your teammates. For instance, here I could have picked a uh, rocket turret or a laser turret, which are play rather differently. Laser turrets are a rapid fire close up kind of deal, whereas rocket turrets are a longer ranged high damage AOE. So there's definitely some strategy involved there. You have all sorts of other different little choices, and this is true with everything else, though I don't feel like going through everything. The four different classes are engineer, support, ranger, hmm, yeah, ranger and trooper? believe commando so they all have their individual roles rangers are definitely damage dealers engineers are kind of close up shotgun kind of guys they also have uh, deployables commandos are your tanks and then of course support buff the entire party so they're pretty useful all right let's back out of here is I have no more need to show you guys that. And let's finally get into some combat. I probably have a link to actually just strict stri uh, skip straight to the combat for those who are impatient and don't want to watch the rest of this bullshit. Alright, let's begin the mission. I can actually tell you guys why this game... kinda has been getting the reviews that it deserves. First of all, this cutscene is just atrocious. Yeah... It's definitely very film grainy and very gross. For some reason, they've decided to do some cutscenes in a pre rendered fashion and other cutscenes non pre rendered straight from the game engine. And the ones straight from the game engine look a whole lot better than the pre rendered ones, let me tell you. Don't know why people insist on doing that because it always ends up looking like shit. All right, so here we are. Don't have an opening conversation, so I'm assuming I'm pretty much good to go. Where do I have to go? Uh, game? I'm no Where do I have to landing me Ah, here we go. Lines, but I just can't get used to those lines being drawn on American soil. Don't get used to it. Stay focused on the mission. Getting to the war factory. The one the Bass has built smack dab in the center of town, right on Main Street, USA? How could I ignore that? We're not going to ignore it. We're going to take it out. Pull yourself together, Barnes. So yeah, as this is the 60s, pretty much every character in this is insufferably patriotic. Oh my god, I hate the 60s so much. But the thing that really annoys me is that it really tries to take itself seriously rather than portraying it in a funny way. You'll also notice that all the characters in this are male. There is only one female character, at least as far as agents go, and she is regulated 
to desk work. The other female characters are either nurses, which is pretty accurate for a timepiece, but this is XCOM. Why are you trying to portray this accurately? I don't really quite understand. Anyway. Massacre. Maybe the civilians got out. Sure they did. Now they're all marching themselves to some alien tower. Knock off the chatter. Enemies ahead. Yeah, for those who don't know, there's this weird sickness present in the game that turns people basically into mindless zombies. Kinda sucks for those people. But that's a story point, and I will not discuss that further, but you may see some people wandering around in a very drone-like fashion, and I figure might as well... Oh, a new weapon. Laser pulse rifle. Let's swap that for my scatter gun. Long-range laser rifle that fires three-round bursts. Okay, seems like a new sniper rifle. I like the sound of that. Okay, so... Let's bring up the tactical menu. The game slows to a crawl whenever I activate this radial menu, and I can issue orders to people. So let's move over this there, guy over boy. here, and move this guy over here. Now, this guy is my support, so he has a small caliber, well, it's not a caliber pistol, I suppose, it's a laser gun, but he has a laser pistol. So he's pretty accurate with long ranges, but he can't do a whole lot of damage. Meanwhile, my engineer has a shotgun, well, a laser shotgun, a scatter laser. So he's very effective at close ranges, and he's got his deployables. He can also use scatter, which is a grenade that can send uh, people running from cover, so that's pretty useful. So first thing I'm going to do is set up my rocket turret so it has a nice range of fire. But it's not too exposed, so it's not going to just be destroyed. So let's put that down. Then I'm going to queue up a mine. So anybody coming down in this direction is going to have a hard time. Then I have a shield sphere, which I'm going to throw down. On Where the hell are you going? Get back behind cover. And then I'm going to use disrupt on this guy because he has a shield. Disrupt destroys shields. And then I'm probably going to lift him so he's not going to be doing him. much. And then I'm going to throw my silicoid. That's all my abilities burned in a couple of seconds. And now we begin the proper combat. So, I have this new laser gun, I guess. And... There we go. That's actually a pretty effective weapon. I like that quite a bit. All right. Let's continue wrecking face. So the guns are pretty cool. They're definitely pretty effective if you use them right. Except for the human guns outside of the sniper rifle. I found that the human guns tend to make things pretty damn bullet spongy. I can empty entire clips into enemies. Which is pretty damn annoying to be honest. I don't particularly like it when I empty four clips of ammunition into one of these outsiders, or even even a sectoid. I've had tons of bullets sunk into one single sectoid, which is pretty damn annoying. Hey, green ammunition. Is this a guy who actually has a plasma weapon? Kind of weird that the first enemy that has a plasma weapon is a sectoid rather than the actual... Don't you dare. All right, as you can see, I've taken a lot of damage, so I'm gonna use a heal, which is a squad heal. It's not a single heal. There we go. So I've healed myself. Mass Effect style lift attack. You're not going anywhere, you bastard. There we go. Dead. And then I think we have one little sectoid, yeah? Goodbye. Taken care of. Now, you do gain experience as you go along through each level. As you can see, Lyot has leveled up, so the game is prompting me to... Hmm. Ah, okay, that's the scope function. There we go. I was trying to use that earlier, and I didn't. I was screwing it up quite a bit. Hmm. Their plasma weapons seem to have disappeared, so yes, that is a new type of pistol. Quite interesting. Oh, shut up. All right, so Lyot has leveled up, so I'm gonna have to uh, go and upgrade him now. He is level five, which is the maximum level. He has unlocked heavy metals, which increases damage from all deployed weapons. 
and then I can do a monkey wrench, which increases my squad's damage against mechanical en enemies, which sounds pretty damn useful, and then fortified turrets, which the turrets are now deployed with a shield. I have definitely been going down the left side for Lyette, so I'm going to do that again. So now his rocket turrets are shielded, so that should be pretty damn useful. It'll make them last a little bit longer under direct fire, I can tell you that much. A lot of laser pulse rifle, am rifle ammunition. It sounds like I'm going to be doing a lot of long-ranged combat. Still have the SMG, though, which is pretty trustworthy. Ever since I found that gun, I've been using it prolifically. I'm not going to be... There seems to be one more down there, perhaps. Ah. Sticking on cover. Rather annoying. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the game actually looks pretty good, even though this is uh, DirectX 9 or DirectX 10, can't tell which. It does have the option to go DirectX 11, but that has tessellation, which would improve the facial animations quite a bit, but seems to disagree with my system, especially while I'm recording. Anything with tessellation seems to just kill fraps. It's actually kind of irritating. I know a couple of people have had this issue as well. It's just not that well optimized, I think. Alright, so let's run down here, see what's going on. Listen, Carter. I didn't mean to lay that heavy shit on you earlier. No, I get it. What they're doing to our towns. Our people. Nothing in my war years prepared me for this. These are your war years, Barnes. So yeah, the dialogue is not particularly inspiring. There have been plenty of moments where I would expect a much more visual, uh, vis visual, uh, visceral emotional reaction from people, and they just kind of deliver it rather like actors just reading a script, to be honest. It's kind of dull. I mean, granted, the XCOM series isn't really known for wonderfully written dialogue, but you have this game which is a third-person shooter and much more narrative driven so and honestly your combat isn't the most amazing thing on the planet so it kind of needs something and I'm not entirely sure what this game has there you go that's a grenade just showing you the fact that there are grenades in this game I'm go now going to refresh those because you can only carry three at a time Unless you pick up a specific upgrade, which I refuse to do, I went with the enhanced healing instead because my teammates like to go down quite a bit. Alright, here we go. Nothing really through here that looked like it was just a point to help you restock some ammunition. Okay, there we go. Really liking this rifle. Though, if I could... Ah, damn silicoids. Those are enemy silicoids. They can be pain in the ass because they like to get in your face quite a bit. Thank you. Stop it. Stop it. There we go. Taken care of. Okay. Let's move right along here. Holy Christ. What a mess. The bastards just move right in, don't they? So, now that you've seen a little bit more, so what exactly are the game's strong points? Well, it's definitely it definitely looks cool. There's a lot of cool visual components to it, and there's definitely a lot of really interesting lore. They kind of went in depth with the whole lore aspect on this, where you can go in and you can read all these notes as characters are discovering new things. But that isn't really new to the XCOM franchise now, is it? Because you could do that in the previous games every time you did more research on an enemy. Every time you encountered somebody, captured them, you always learned... Ah, fucking Muton. Yeah, anybody who watched my Let's Play remembers frickin' Mutons. Holy crap. Alright, let's toss a few grenades his way. Unfortunately, the easiest way to deal with a Muton is... Uh, grenade spam and ability spam. They just have a lot of goddamn armor and they're really irritating to deal with. Let's drop a shield on Lyette. Where's my rocket turret? Let's put the rocket turret up here. This is not a, the best place to be fighting, to be honest, but 
We uh, will deal with what we were dealt. Combat stims to make ourselves a little bit more effective. This guy is definitely going to have to move up and actually join the damn fight. Same with Lyat. Alright. And then we're going to toss our little silicoid down there. Alright. And take this thing out, shall we? I think I missed with most of those grenades. That is completely out of ammo. Crap. Okay. So this is what I was talking about when it came to damn bullet spongy enemies. Holy hell. This guy's just sucking up hits. I'm actually gonna have to switch weapons here, which kinda sucks. Granted, the sniper rifle's pretty effective for what it is, but... I would much rather have one of the alien weapons. Because, in general, they seem to be a little bit more effective outside of fucking mutons. Okay, swapping back to the alien weapon. Looks like it's almost dead, but as you can see, I've wasted pretty much every single round I've had on the same damn enemy. Alright, my teammate has gone down. I'm gonna have to revive him. Which is pretty easy. You walk over, you press X, which heals them almost... Which heals them almost to completion. And it puts all their abilities on cooldown, which is slightly annoying, but I suppose you need some sort of penalty, huh? Alright, gonna lift that guy so he's not flanking my teammate anymore. That turret is really annoying. Let's do something about that, shall we? And now we're completely out of ammo. Fudge nuggets. Okay. Uh, if I remember correctly, there was a shotgun back here. Yes, there is. So let's collect the bullets. Let's get the frag grenades. I'm not going to grab the pistol because fuck the normal pistol. It's a very bad weapon. Alright, there we go. Glad I could leave combat and my teammates were completely fine and the AI is too stupid to actually press the damn advantage. Alright, let's toss our landmine down here, which we're going to use more like a grenade because that's all I seem to use these damn... Oh, look at that! I can't because the control... Controls are really damn janky. Alright, so let's toss this mine here and use it like a grenade because there I haven't really run into a situation where I would want to use it as a normal mine. Area denial is not something that really exists in this game. Alright, so let's have you move up again because I don't know why you keep on moving from where I tell you to move. And let's get a shield and then more combat stems. Then I believe that guy is shielded, so we're gonna want him dealt with too. Kinda sucks that all I have here is a bloody shotgun, but it's what I have to deal with. Heal myself, and then lift the tech commander. There we go, and he's dealt with. Now all we have to do is deal with the gun turret, which funnily enough can't seem to hit me right here. Our rocket turret seems to be hitting shit. I seem to have put it in a very bad place. Now, an interesting thing that you can do is you can actually lift turrets with your lip. It exploded. Where that oversized son of a bitch came out. Let's go. You can actually lift turrets with your lift ability. It actually gives them a better arc of fire. It's pretty cool. I like the fact that that's in the game. Gives a little bit more synergy in an otherwise synergy-less game. All right, here we go. Looks like I can upgrade this guy now. Increases squad bleed-out time. That's actually pretty damn useful. Let's go with that, because there is permadeath in this game, but only for your friendly characters. If you die, it's a game over. If your teammates die, they're gone for good, which means you need to train somebody else from scratch, which is a big pain in the ass. Well, 
Actually, I'm kind of lying on that aspect. It's not a pain in the ass at all, because in reality, you can just send the low-level guy on repeated dispatch missions and level him up that way. You don't actually have to deal with leveling him up. If you were just to take out him out on missions, sure, because he would actually be relatively weak and kind of hampering the team, but that's not something you have to deal with due to... There's a blaster launcher here, which means I'm probably going to want to take it, is there's going to be something particularly nasty here. Alright, let's see. There's going to be a sectopod or something, isn't there? Still seems to be some strategic cover around here. Or maybe not. Maybe that was We're just something down, to grab to deal with a muton. Not if I can help it. It's just... They're taking everything. But they're gonna have to go through us to get it. Yeah, the dialogue is pretty crap. Alright. Let's go along here. And there's a facility there. I'm gonna have to go to that. So this is our rearmament. Uh, it is a resupply station. Basically it gives you full ammunition which is pretty useful. And then it also gives you access to all your weaponry so you can swap out weapons you if you want and you can also swap out characters if you want. Then again I don't have anybody to swap out to so I'm not going to do so. Hmm. All right, anything else out here? Nope. And I already have these guys with the best equipment that they can take. Unfortunately, the weapons are restricted to class. I might as well show you that. So I could try to equip Lyette with another weapon, but it doesn't let me. I only have the choice between the human shotgun and the scatter laser, which is kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. All right, so let's continue on. Enemies engaged, huh? Contact. Oh, glad you guys saw those enemies before I did. Alright. Let's disrupt you. And then get behind cover. There is a little sectoid there. Gonna have to deal with him. Let's toss the rocket turret down there. And we're gonna save my lift because there could be a much more devastating enemy somewhere around here that's going to need the attention now a problem I have another problem I have with this game one of many is the fact that I don't really feel threatened in this game other than having to deal with a muton which is ridiculously bullet spongy or dealing with a sectopod which you haven't seen yet which is a hilariously armored enemy and takes forever to kill as opposed to the actual XCOM enemy unknown game where you can deal with it if you know what you're doing. From the very beginning, I have just felt like a mass murderer. I can just take down entire squadrons of enemies by myself, which would normally take end game equipment to kind of achieve that effect. And even if you did have end game equipment, you were still in danger. If you made some stupid moves, you were going to lose characters. In this, three guys can take down entire armies that would... If you ran into an army of this side in XCOM Enemy Unknown, you'd be fucked. And furthermore, the characters in XCOM Enemy Unknown were better equipped. They had power armor. They had modern equipment. They had modern grenades. They had modern LMGs. They actually had armor. I have a freaking sweater. Granted, I have a Ghostbusters style backpack on, but that doesn't actually do much for defending you, even though somehow it does reduce enemy attacks, which is kind of weird because it doesn't supply me with a shield or anything like that. I'm not even sure if you can actually get a shield, but maybe you can. Maybe that's something you get later on in the game. I don't know. I'm gonna keep on punching these damn things. Also, another thing that this game does really poorly is explain to you how you have all the powers you do. For a game that actually did do a lot of focus on the lore, it doesn't actually explain how any of this crap works. I was capable of lifting people up into the air 
very early on in the game with absolutely no exp explanation to it. I can summon silicoids, which I don't know how I can do that. There has been no in-game excuse to actually justify me being able to summon those things. In fact, I haven't even seen a brochure on, uh, brochure, a, uh, debriefing on what they actually are, unlike pretty much everything else in the game, like the sectoids and the outsiders. So, I don't really get it. It seems rather inconsistent to me. Alright, factory control device, shut down. Convenient button that shuts down the entire facility. Alright. Or shuts down a good part of the facility. Let's move onward. So, yeah. As you can see, this game is... It's not that it's a really bad game. I'm definitely harping on it quite a bit. But it's not that good of a game. It feels kind of like a combination of Gears of War and Mass Effect, and it's not freaking Sectobud. But it's not really the best parts of those games. It's actually kind of the worst parts of those games, except for this. I think this is pretty great. I wish this was something that uh, Mass Effect had in it. The fact that you. Now, why is this guy actually not in cover? That guy would have to be shooting through a wall to actually damage my teammate. Oh, well. But, yeah, I do like the fact that you have a lot more direct control over your teammates, and it slows everything down so you can actually plan out stuff. That's pretty damn useful, and I'm kind of disappointed that I haven't seen more stuff like this in other games. Just going to dump all my abilities on this damn thing because these are a bitch to take down. They just absorb so much ammunition. But that actually makes sense as far as the sectopods go. They're supposed to be kind of terrifying. Alright. But then again, they aren't as terrifying as they were in Enemy Unknown. The first time I ran into a sectopod in Enemy Unknown, I just about shat myself. As opposed to this, where I know if I hit the... If I hit the, uh... Thing, the, sorry, I'm trying to shoot and focus at the same time, which is not, and talk, which is not always that useful. But as long as I hit the canopy enough times, it's going to shatter the canopy, which is going to reveal the little secto, uh, sectoid piloting it, and then I have, just have to shoot him a couple of times in the head, and the thing's down, as opposed to... Enemy unknown, where it was actually a legitimate danger, where it could actually kill your guys in one single shot. So you have to be very, very careful about how you engage it. That if you engage it well, then you're going to kill it. In this, just shoot it enough damn times, and it's gonna go down either way. You can be a little bit smarter about it, but. At the end of the day, it's not that dangerous. It's just a really bullet spongy target. And I'm starting to repeat myself because I don't have too much else to say. Very pretty lights. So, conclusions. It's a very pretty game. It can be fun at some points. The dialogue sucks. The gunplay, not the best thing in the world. There is a progression system, which is okay. I don't really care for my teammates. And... It's a full-priced game, so... Really, I leave it in your hands. If you guys have liked what you've seen here, if it looks interesting to you, feel free to pick it up. I have included a link in the description to the main website. You can pick it up on Steam or Gamersgate. So feel free to check those out. Uh, the prices should be listed on the li uh, should be listed on the screen right about now. But that's really all I have to say. So for now, this has been Lyat with Cyan Firefly. TTFN. Tata -ta for now.